Right, we're on. Today we're talking about the pitch of the shoulders and how that can change plane in the golf swing. How can that possibly change the plane? Well, today we're going to find out. That is my mission today. The plane of the swing can be a bit of a mystery. There can be quite a bit of confusion there as to what the actual swing plane is. Is it over plane or under plane? And what's better, being over plane or under plane? Well, I reckon being exactly on plane is probably the most optimum or the best for us. Eh? And that's my task for today, is to try and get you guys to understand or to feel what it's like to be on plane. I'll give you a couple of demonstrations as to what happens when you're over plane and when you're under plane. Now, you can still play successful golf from being over or under plane, but certainly being on plane would be the best place to start from. That would be the most neutral starting point. So if we can get you on plane, a feeling of what it's like to be on plane, over plane and under plane, then you can decide what's best for you. For this, you don't need to hit golf balls. Just grab a golf club, get something that resembles a golf club in the house and follow this drill. Here we go. Okay, so swing it on plane. Swing it on plane is everybody wants to, to capture this into out path and under plane and all those good things that come with that, and so do I, absolutely, and I'm going to pass this on today. Have you got a club at the ready? Good. So over plane, here we go. Taking the club back, it's the pitch of the shoulders and how the shoulders work that's going to control plane in this video. Okay, so understanding how the shoulders work in relation to downswing, backswing, follow through, all these sort of actions if you like, that's what we're working on today. That there is an over plane swing, so I've come up on one plane, then I've gone out and gone over the other. This way I've gone up the plane, then I've dropped and come under plane. So there's a general plane. That's a general plane. Anywhere between horizontal and the lie angle or vertical, anywhere in there, that 90 degrees there, from there to there, anywhere in there is an accepted plane. Generally going up on one plane and back down on a similar plane is what we we'll want to do. That's class of swinging on plane. Swinging up one, down another, up one, down another, or up one back down the same one. That is ideal. As close to that as we can get, we're on. Easier said than done, I hear you say. Well, not really, once you can feel it. Once you understand it and you get a little drill to feel that and create that motion, then that's nah, not actually that hard. So grab your golf club, place it across your shoulders, because we're talking shoulders today. It's shoulders that's going to control the plane of your golf swing. Into a dress position. Look at where the shaft goes, I'll move a little bit further away, look where the shaft goes, look at the pitch of the shoulders. The dress position, up to the top of your backswing, and this shaft demonstrates the pitch of my shoulders. Now this pitch of my shoulders, ideally I want to come back down on a very similar line. I can feel that, I can feel that line. I'm going to try and watch it in the camera, I've gone up on one line, and the shaft's come back down the same line, and through. The camera might distort this slightly, but that's the world we live in. Up, back down, up. Halfway across, this might help as well. Up, down, up. So the grip end of the club there is now parallel to where the head of the club is there. I assume. So I can feel that, that's a good checkpoint. Straight across, I like this one though. Just having half the club up because it's much more visual. There, down to ball to target line. It will be slightly above the ball to target line. There, there, there. Okay, now if I'm over playing, what's going to happen? I'm going to come up. This is your classic guy who slices, classic guy that comes over the top. So this out to in motion. Instead of coming back down the plane we went up on, this is a guy who comes out to in. He's going to be. From there, he's going to be up here, and then he's going this way. Now the shoulders have pitched very differently there. You can see the plane of the shoulders, now the right shoulder gets higher. Look what happens to the golf club. That's out to in. There, higher right shoulder, out to in, changed. Dress, there, out to in guy, you can see the path of the club going left. You can really feel a difference there, so certainly trying to find out how, how the variant and the difference between the two is key, absolutely key. Place it in there, up, down. Much better to work on the feeling of where you should be as opposed to, okay, that's me, that is me. Don't go practicing that move. When I write stuff for Bunker Magazine, articles in Bunker Magazine, we've now decided let's not put any pictures in at all 
of the wrong position. Who wants to see the wrong position? Who's even interested in looking at positions that are incorrect? Just look at the right position. That's where I need to be. That's what I want to do. This is the same. Let's do the correct feeling. That's where I want to feel. That's going to get me on plane. Shoulders pitching perfectly. Let's not do the wrong feeling. However, for the purposes of me to demonstrate this and get it across to you guys, you have to understand the wrong and the right feeling. But don't go and practice them. Here's the guy who's too far from the inside, stuck underneath. Remember McElroy's tee shot in the 10th at Augusta when it went to the garden? This was him up the top. And then from there, that action, right shoulder goes too low. Of course, now he's into out, struggling. So there, look at the pitch of the shaft. Left shoulder goes up this time, and we're into out. Pitch the shoulders, level there. Visualise that. And they're the same on this side. Shoulders at X degree. Shoulders at X degree. Not at X degree, and then altering that. Anyway, up the top, down to the golf ball. Okay, instant feedback, completely strange feeling. Actually, probably the perfect feeling. You can feel the pitch of the shoulders and how that dictates the path of your golf club. Now we think hands and arms and things come into play. Of course hands and arms come into play, but if we're using our large muscles, which we should do, so that's our trunk, if our shoulders are attached to that, if we get that to work correctly, pitching the shoulders correctly, we'll be on plane, or closer to the plane we took the club back on. As I mentioned, it doesn't have to be perfectly on plane, by any manner of means, but the closer we get to the line on the way back, the closer on the way down, then there's more chance of hitting straighter golf shots, or less curvature, because we've not changed the path as much, due to an inconsistent swing plane. So I take my address position, let me feel the correct position. There, and there. Unfortunately, I have a mirror here that I can look at. Good. Can I put that into real feel? I've got six iron in my hand. There. To there. A little soft one. That's good. I'm going to slightly increase that range of motion. there. So the plane's good. That's perfectly straight. That is perfectly straight. There wasn't much power in it, so spin was down, so any curvature wasn't really going to show. But the ball went perfectly straight. Good plane. Again, I'm going to add speed this time, so let's do this in real time. So there, there, there. Good. It feels as though I come down in exactly the same line as I went up. It's good. Really good. Now, as we know, feel and real are very different, so it feels as though I go up on one line and back down on the same line. That's half the battle. And what's going to tell me if that's been the case? Well, of course, the ball flight. Where the ball's gone. If you understand your ball flight laws, you'll know that. It's another video. I feel another video coming. <laughs> See, so many people practice backswing out there on the range. People, they're working here. Yes, if I get to there, that's great. And I get to there, that's great. What about the, what about the follow through? What about from impact to follow through and then finish? What about there and then continue through to there? If I can get to this position, continue on playing and focus on that post impact position. That was so good. Focusing on the post-impact position, because it's two sides, it doesn't just stop at impact. Sorry, I've got a real mixture of golf balls there. It doesn't just stop at impact, we have to continue through and complete the swing. So that's good on plane, coming down on plane, and then the plane on the way through. Good on plane, down on plane, and then the plane on the way through. Yeah, I'm happy with that. <laughs> so there we are, the shoulders can control the plane of the golf club, not just the shaft, not just the hands and arms. Once you've understood that and really practiced that drill and felt exactly how that feels in that drill, that's so much 
more beneficial than just going out there guessing. Get the muscle memory working. Take lots of swings with the drill with the club there to feel how the body reacts to that and then try and do the same with the golf club in your hand. When there's a ball on the ground though, we do react differently to it because we're only human, we want to get the ball into the air. Got to try and not do that. Try and create the motion and then strike will happen. Create the motion and then strike will happen. Right, before we go, thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to my channel. It's free of charge. If you enjoyed the content, just click that button. Also, the bell notification, that gives you instant notifications of all my videos. And the thumbs up button, great for the algorithm for YouTube. Makes me more popular, shares it around more people. And I really appreciate that. So one thumbs up from everyone, all one million of you who watch this. That would be fantastic. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video.